A brand new New York Times article has just acknowledged that Asian men in media are finally getting the girl. Let's discuss. Oh, yes. The prestigious New York Times has acknowledged something the internet has been talking about for decades. Uh, let's read the article, Andrew. Asian men are finally starting to get the girl or guy. Western pop culture, past and present, has often emasculated Asian male characters. A new crop of roles are starting to offer alternatives. Andrew, this article is gigantic. It's probably the biggest one I've ever seen from a mainstream source. I mean, the New York Times is like the biggest newspaper in the entire world. And it's written by this guy, Andrew, Matt Stevens. Ah, who is Matt Stevens, David? I had to do some research because I was like, why would a white guy write this article? Matt Stevens apparently... Is it an adopted Asian? Ah, all right. Shout out to the adoptees out there writing for the New York Times, David. If the New York Times talks about it, it's legitimate. But yeah, honestly, uh, we're going to go break down parts of the article. Obviously, this is going viral. It's getting shared a lot because it's a mainstream uh, platform that is talking about this, even though on our channel, on the Fung Bros channel, we've been talking about this for a decade, but uh, it's good to see that the New York Times picked it up. Yeah, let's be honest here. The New York Times doesn't typically, or at least in the past, obviously has been very like white centric, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then more recently it's expanded. And, and the New York Times readership, Andrew, it's really affluent. It's really educated. It's uh, really based in the professional world. So mm. I guess it's really interesting to see this kind of topic be talked about in a completely different sphere than, for example, Andrew, Reddit or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok. Ah, the rise of the Oriental man in media. Right. So anyway, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Small Ass Sauce on Amazon or at smallassauce.com. Andrew, there's uh, four or five main reactions that I wanted to highlight. Some older guys were like, man, thanks for highlighting this. Like you really validated my experience, New York Times. I never thought you guys would say it because Andrew, some people in the educated crowd, they're waiting for their sort of like favorite newspaper to say it before they can almost like feel it. Yes, because only if the New York Times says it, it doesn't matter if the Fung Bros or Next Shark or any other <laughs> platforms like that say it. It's only if the New York Times. Some people, especially the older crowd, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, let's be honest, they might be orientated in their brain to feel that way. Number two, and one of the most interesting uh, things that I saw were people basically doubting the article. Somebody saying, well, in my area, non-Asians have been dating Asian Americans for, uh, it's really common and nobody has an issue with it. And then somebody else was like, come on, bro, let's be honest here women dating out of the community and men dating out of the community is completely different. Right, now this is talking about, of course, the uh, dating imbalance between Asian men and Asian women, where Asian women date outside of their race uh, at a higher rate than Asian men do. And, and it is documented. completely different. No, it is it, completely, uh, listen, you guys want me to get into gender dynamics? I don't know, it's 100x different. It, it is different. I think we just will stop there. It's different. <laughs> right. I don't want to get canceled in 2024. Number three, Andrew, somebody, there was a huge discussion about just watch K-dramas. You, If literally in the past several decades, if you were not watching shows from Asia, you would literally see no empowered Asian men. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because I think it is a good point that there has been a ton of content and good, strong Asian male characters over on the Asian side, whether it's Korean, Chinese, Taiwanese, uh, Dude, even Thailand, you're Indonesia. You're talking about the raid? In yeah, the there's, there's been plenty of movies. Philippines has movies. So I think, um, like, but I, I guess we have to acknowledge that as Asian American guys, sometimes you're a little bit separated from that side of the world and you don't consume that content. And maybe it's hard to see yourself as like Chow Yun Fat to be inspired by that. You know what I mean? Like even though he made some American movies, it's hard to kind of get inspired by Jet Li as far as how to carry yourself. Maybe it inspired yeah. you to go do martial arts. Jackie Chan may have inspired you to do martial arts, which is great. But as far as how to carry yourself because they're foreigners, they're they're from Asia, it just didn't fully connect. What you're referring to, in my opinion, is a very real dynamic that a lot of Asian American guys go through, but it shouldn't be that way. Because right. I when I watch Yao Ming, I was still cheering for him like he was the same to me as Jeremy Lin, but I could see why, to your point, a lot of people cannot draw that neural connection. Right, not only that, Yao Ming is 7'6", and you know most people are not even near that height. Right, right, right. You know, I mean, it's situational. Like, maybe even two brothers, they process it differently. Like we said, it's, it's like you said. And then point number four, Andrew, one of the main reactions I saw was somebody was saying, you know, back in the 80s, we just thought 
we, if we perfected our English, it would work out for us, but we just got screwed, man. This article came out 40 years too late for me. And other people on other forums referencing this article said, ah, I was born 30 years too late. Uh, yeah. So I guess there was some, um, I guess, what, wistfulness? Yeah. When, this, when New York Times like legitimizes the movement, some people are like, well, this is like 30, 40 years out too late for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always tell this like to any Asian guy watching who's like, you know, maybe feels underrated, but they're still young Asian guy. I'm like, dude, this is still the best time of all time to be an Asian guy with all the information and inspiration and access you have. You have to think about it, guys. The guys older than us, 20 years older than us, they did not have a good. They had it worse than us. Oh, man. So I'm saying like, we got to still be thankful that we're in, you're in the best time ever. They're witnessing their best, Yes, it is true that the be their best years are behind them and, and they missed the boat. It's true. They could get, I'm not saying that they are, but some, there is a very high divorce rate. So for the divorcees, they can, they're they hopping back in the pool. It depends on how much energy they got. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends, guys. Take some testosterone. And then number five, uh, somebody just said, there's a whole country of Asian Americans that need to come that needs to come to terms with how growing up in a white society has shaped their perception of themselves and often negatively. From Asian women tying their self-worth to their desirability to white men and Asian men who are portrayed as completely asexual, generations of Asian Americans have been grown up with this less than mindset and it will take several generations to heal from this even in a best case scenario. Wow, when you said several generations, I feel that, man. That's a wild statement, but actually kind of true. On a human development level, scientifically, he's actually completely true because trauma ricochets multiple generations. It's going to take multiple generations to heal from that multiple. Yeah, we're talking about shifts move. in identity and how you see yourself. Very um, anyway, let's just get into the article real quick. Andrew, we want to acknowledge that in the early 1900s, Andrew, even 100 years ago, there was some guys like James Shigata and uh, Sesi Hayagawa in the silent film era that were leading males. Yeah, yeah, and I think that especially at a time when there was literally zero Asian representation that the only Asian guy you saw was on that screen, I think it did do something, but I think it really only affected like the top 1% of Asian guys who were in a similar position as them, who maybe they were inspired now to dress like them and use that as a model. But I, I think, and, of course, it's always... Uh, and, uh, useful to be honest this was pre-world war ii and world war one too and that that completely yeah. changed the relationship uh, uh pre all the wars in the 60s and 70s yeah you know? i do think back then the eastern man and the oriental man was uh quite a mystery and the whole culture was a mystery but once they became the enemy then we knew how to treat them uh, and then we're gonna move through the 1970s and you had bruce lee late 1980s you had russell wong uh, obviously, they, none of them were nearly as big as Bruce Lee. Then in the year 2000, Andrew, here's just a smattering of Asian guys that had like roles as chads in movies, but were never the leading role. You got Will Yun Lee, Rick Yoon, Ian Anthony Dale. But of course, obviously, like the article is saying, more than often than not, the portrayal has been nerdy, meek, the opposite of a leading man type of yeah, look. It seemed like that the nerdy, comical dweeby Asian guy, that stuck a lot harder than the Asian hunks. Like, you could have had an Asian hunk once a year in a movie pop up, and you'd see him as a cameo here and there. Oh, look at that tall Asian guy. Ooh, like on the Brandy show had multiple Asian guys. Right, right. All the Hoppa guys, like uh, whether it was Brandon Lee or the guy who did that, uh, I'll just pop up this one movie right here with yeah. Holly Ann Peterson. Yes, and I think like stuff like that where it's like, uh, for some reason, those characters didn't really stick out in people's minds. Right, you're saying that there are solid screen caps and examples of it, but they didn't become these cultural icons that actually changed culture. Yeah, I think the dweeby Asian guy was way more memorable. The Long Duck Dong was way more memorable for people and stole the show and people remember that. Right, nobody ever remembers Russell Wong, which was popping at the same time as Long Duck Dong. But I got a question and I'm gonna get into this later at the end of the video and I've always asked this question, I will continue to ask this question is, why did the dweeby portrayal stick so much harder with people, huh? Was it possibly more true in their eyes? Well, to be honest, more people growing up in their suburban white 1980s American neighborhood knew somebody that was way more like Long Duck Dong than people who knew people who were like Russell Wong, to be honest. Um, but yeah, obviously the representation is changing right now. As you can see right here, the Olympics, all this stuff. Anyway, let's just get into the article. It says... 
It was not long ago that actor and writer Joel Kim Booster basically was told, man, you're only going to be able to play a Chinese delivery boy. And that's what all the other actors in the audition room told him. Right, right, right. And I think that that was, I don't think that's the case today. I, I think it was more the case 15 years ago. But I think, you know, about 12 years ago, we started seeing a much bigger shift. Right, right, right. I guess back then, it's the easiest way to put it is there was only scraps that everybody was fighting for back then. And now there's like full on combo meals coming down the pipeline. However, it's not going to every, not everybody's getting the combo meals. But, but, but back then there was only scraps. Exactly. Then it goes on to say that he got, went on to play a, portray a gay Asian American in Fire Island. And he's basically saying that obviously that was like a big movie that he got to be the star of. Right. I mean, that movie is like, Kind of, I don't want to say it's based on his life, but inspired by because Joel Kim Booster is a gay guy. You know, he's a gay right, Asian right. comedian. Uh, so I think like this article talking about both including the gay Asian guy and the straight Asian male por portrayal, obviously, they're, they're putting it together in this article. Right, right. They're saying that their statuses are inextricably linked, even though they're, because they're both appealing to the white society, even though one is appealing to women and one is appealing to males. Right. Um. Basically, for me, my only thing is it's like, man, it's like once a club line for a phenotype starts moving into the club, there's still certain traits or identities that can get you to the front of that line getting into the club. Whether your face is like perfectly sculpted like Manny Jacinto, who's also in this article, or you have a different identity that could move you, I guess, like with D1 priority in the, the same line. It's almost like a, a, a line for like an airline, you know, when you're boarding the plane, it's like everybody's boarding the plane, but some people are way more in the boarding. Priority. Oh, they're in zone one. They're in priority boarding. And then you might be in zone eight. Right, right, right. So I guess, yeah, that's, that's a whole nother more nuanced aspect of it. Uh, it goes on to say that Manny Jacinto says, you know, man, we just all want to push the narrative of Asian males being more desirable in media. And the thing is, those opportunities aren't really given to us. It's on us very much to create them ourselves. Mm, but he doesn't go into how he creates them themselves because unless they're producing or writing the movie, right, they don't really write it themselves i guess I, i'm not sure well, what he I means guess he's by that maybe referring to an entire synergistic system on the back end and the front end not just like overloading the front end with all these like good looking actors who can act but them having uh i guess the funding or the production or the directors on the back end or the writers to green light it from a more like hidden yes, watch yes i mean the fact that a lot of asian producers have come up in the past 10 years to become powerful and therefore they're able uh, producers and directors so that they're able to uh, make the powerful decision to put an Asian person in a desirable role. I, I want to say the lead of Netflix right now is Asian Dan mm -hmm. Lin. And so, I mean, that's gigantic, right? Um, uh, Kumail Nanjani basically became a Marvel superhero and he said he didn't want to be nerdy because he had the option to be really nerdy as a superhero, but he got super buff because he didn't want the first Indian superhero to also be the nerdiest superhero ever. Right. Yes. Yes. He did get buff. Here's a picture. Oh, he got super jacked. Uh, I will say this, but they also go on to say that how come him and Shang-Chi were the only two Marvel leading men that were straight that didn't have a love interest? And it was the two Asian guys. So the article does make sure that they point out that it's like, man, they finally gave them this straight Asian male superheroes, but they still didn't let them get with any women. Yes. When is a strong, fully dimensional Asian male hunk going to have a love interest? I don't know. Um, it goes on to state that in some of the new pieces having Asian guys in them, other than like maybe shortcomings, there's uh, people aren't necessarily trying too hard to make grand statements about what Asian men should do or become. You know how like there's always a debate, like should we just double down on how the world sees us or should we adapt to the West? Basically saying that the new pieces that were uh, trending, such as Love Hard, doesn't really come to a conclusion on that. Mm. Like they don't, you know what I mean? There's no like hard hanging advice, like, uh, you know, I guess like, the old hood films like Boys in the Hood, you know how there was like a hardcore message that would like slap you over the head? Message! No, there is none. Um, I don't think there always needs to be. I know that, you know, especially when you're talking about more of like, you know, the comedic characters, I think like, I think like it's good to just see a normal looking Asian dude fall in love. And I do think love, falling in love on screen and that 
being portrayed accurately and realistically is important because those are the images that stick in your mind. Like, oh, that person's a human. They can love somebody. They now I have to envision them making love and all this other stuff. And that's what over the years when like black or white guys have had that, especially white guys in media, then obviously that sticks in a lot of women's mind of like, oh, I can see this man loving, you know, because like I have that image in my mind. Yeah, I would say that I'm of two minds about it. On one side, from as an artist, you don't want to be handcuffed by always needing to hit people over the head with a message. But if we were trying to move society on the quickest pace possible, you would need to do the over the head. You know, that uh, like that movie Crash, how it was like, message, 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 message. Um, it goes on to say that basically Joel Kim Booster didn't feel ugly in his this is a crazy thing but in his gay scene in suburban Illinois, but then he felt ugly in the gay scene once he moved to LA because LA was more harshest and lookest versus his small bubble that he grew up in. Yeah. That's, that's everybody though. Everybody feels less good looking when they get to LA, even as a straight dude, as a straight girl, Right, because you're saying that everybody's get, so good looking, right? Girls get hit hard, man. You think of the cutest girl from your hometown, like in your high school, in your hometown away from L.A., and you compare them to all the girls in L.A. is crazy because L.A. just... Well, no, because usually, let's be honest, there's this story of a girl from a small town. She's the hottest chick in high school, and she's got the most charisma, and everybody tells her to go to L.A. and become a star, but then she gets there, and she realizes she just... There's a lot of that. Right. You know, she's actually like an LA seven while she was like an Omaha 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it has to do with market efficiencies once you reach like a huge scalable level. But I do also think that maybe even people feel the need to buy into what the LA like narrative is. If the LA narrative is different than like a non-market efficient, like whatever, like little puddle of a environment that you're from, then that can play into it as well. But yeah, big fish you know, ocean pools, whatever it's true for everything. And last, last but not least, Andrew, in the New York times article, it talks about how progress is often followed by regression. It's two steps forward, one step back. It talks a little bit, even about how in the Oscars, Asians won everything. And then the next year there was no Asians at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, basically it's not like a, you just kick in the door and then it just like floods. Sometimes it's like a two steps forward, one step back. Basically the progress is uneven. Yes. I agree that progress is not perfect and it is definitely not perfectly linear, meaning it does not only, once it goes up, only stay going up at that rate. Sometimes it goes up and then it kind of plateaus and then you no. think it ditches down and then it goes back it, up it again. It did feel, in my opinion, tell me if you're, I'm right, Andrew. It did feel like Hollywood was like, whoo, we got that monkey off our back. We let the Asians just dominate one of the Oscars after COVID. Not but, racist. We're not racist. Uh, but but I will say this, that it did do something like you can't say that all those things earning Oscars and all these awards didn't do a lot for those actors and actresses and people involved in making those movies. So then they go on to get more chances and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it was a good year when you had multiple pieces that happened to come out that were good. Then give them all the awards. Just do it. And then next year be like, eh, they didn't really present anything. Right. Um, let's get into the comment section. Like we said, guys, obviously this is not the first time we've covered this topic, but it's the first time the New York Times has. They have a completely different readership, really high income, really educated, really professional, affluent, urban metropolitan based, at least in the burbs, adjacent burbs. So let's anyway, let's get into the comments. Somebody said, let's remember and be clear that a lot of the actors getting on like Henry Golding are half Asian. They seem a lot more palatable for Hollywood. Yeah, I do think the half Asian guys do oftentimes act a little bit differently because they're raised with a different identity or a different father. Yeah, usually, and different right? fathers and different a look on their face. So even if they look kind of Asian, they might. I mean, Henry Golding is charming. That's why, like, I think as much as it was Henry's look, it was also his charm that got him the role, too. So like right. and that charm is not not every Asian guy has that British charm. Right. Well, you're saying that it could be attributed to his charming British dad, right? Yeah, possibly. But I'll say this too. And, and, you know, much love. We know Henry Golding, but it's like, they're usually not the most militant pro-Asian male guys either. Yes. Because you usually true. got a white dad, to be honest, like probably 95% of the time. Obviously, there's uh, some exceptions. Hey, hey, hey. Louis Tan, Bruce Lee was an exception. Hey, man, I just watched Henry Golding in the uh, Ungentlemanly Warfare movie. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, 
Somebody said, in a way, I'm really glad that Asian American men were left out of media and movies for a long time because look at how messed up it's gotten everybody else in society. So this guy was, was an Asian American guy basically saying, yeah, everybody else got screwed by being tapped in and engaged and worrying about their representation. We were just worried, worried about our jobs and our money and our bank accounts. So that was a good thing. I think it depends on what Asian you are. I mean, I think if you're like a big group Asian, like a Chinese, I think you care a lot, you know, because there's a lot of you. So I think that's my thing. Right, right, right. Because you're saying there is, it's true that there are smaller groups of Asians that are going to get ignored even if all Asians get on just based off. That is true. Distribution slice. Un unfortunately, that is true, yes. Uh, somebody said, how come this article didn't talk about Steven Yoon and Dev Patel? They are like the artsy hipster chads. How come they seem to get left out of these things? I agree. I agree. Uh, artsy hipster chads is funny. Kind of like the slim, slender, but like still masculine guys and still kind of cool. You know what they remind me of, Andrew? Of fencers. You know how fencers are never like bulky dudes, like Thor. You know what I mean? The but they are... Stabbing each other. It's so still masculine. Be, yeah. It's like a, it's like a, I'll defeat you and then have a spot of tea. It's like, a classy masculinity. Yeah. Number four, uh, there's one of the other comments. Somebody said, what about K-pop? This article underrated how much Koreans are changing it for everybody. Yeah. I mean, what about the Chinese swim team? What about all these Chinese athletes? You know, I mean, I think that these are all notable things and K-pop obviously has been huge as we've noted on this channel before. Uh, but I think that everything matters because because not everybody's tapped into the Summer Olympic swim team and not everybody's tapped into K-pop. K-pop is something that if you're an average American, you can easily miss. You know, I'm still to this day. So I'm saying, I guess, like, you need the American uh, side of things, like the Hollywood, to still validate you. Yeah. You know what I realized, though, is that for me, if I'm on a date with a non-Asian girl, she's way more likely to have watched K-dramas because I don't look anything like a K-pop guy myself. So it's almost, like you said, it depends on the sphere. Different people are looking at different spheres of content. K-dramas, that's a bunch of Korean guys falling in love. That's why it's important that yes. when they look at you, yeah. and, they and can maybe imagine that you might possibly also be able to fall in love. Yeah, more grown too. It's more grown than K-pop. Shout out to K-pop though. It's different. It's, that's more affecting Gen Z, Gen Alpha, the K-dramas and uh, uh, athletes is more affecting That's the older a good brains. debate that we may have on our channel one day. Which does more, K-dramas or K-pop? That's a funny debate. I want to say... Don't give your answer, oh, David. Man. We'll have the video. Um, somebody said, it's uh, yes, Koreans are killing it right now, but it's and it seems like Korean women like their own men more than Chinese women like Chinese guys. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a whole other video topic, but yes, I would say that they're... There's some truth to that. Yes, yes, there's some truth to that. Maybe not 100 out of 100. Moving on. Next comment. Somebody said, I'm 54 in media matters. It totally impacts the society, how we understand each other because most people don't have heavy exposure in reps with each other. So basically, that's why people just rely on media. That's why. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, if it's, it's like, let's say you don't, you're like, man, I don't really know any Asian people, man, but let me just turn on this uh uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Then it's like, oh my gosh, you saw a bunch of Asian people in that movie and you understand some family dynamics. You heard the language being said. So now you're just blasted with a whole two hour blast of culture and you're like, Yo, is that what Asians are really are you like? like yeah, shit. I'm sure going to treat my laundry, local laundry lady different next time yeah. I go in. Yeah, man, I don't know. She might have an LGBT daughter and be going through a lot of family things and stress. Uh, so it's like, of course, now you understand them a lot better. It is important. Um, now, interestingly enough, Andrew, I've never seen a New York Times article get into the dating aspect because it transferred. Cause you know how there's a link between Hollywood media representation and then like dating representation in the dating market. This guy said, I always get hated on uh, for being out with white women and I'm like an older Asian American guy. And basically it turned into a whole debate because a white guy came in and said, you know, I'm a short white guy and I don't think it's that different for me too. People probably wonder how I got nice women because as a short white guy, that's viewed as something that's like whack mm. or like a bad, uh, I guess a negative attribute that would affect your like overall score. But then I was thinking about it. I said, I think for a while, Asian guys in the mainstream of America, I don't know, your own little town or own little friend, circle of friends could be different based on different attributes. But I feel like, almost all Asian guys, Andrew, were like short, redheaded with freckles. Mm. 
you know how like a short redheaded freckled guy, I guess in the white world would probably not get treated would be the whipping boy. Yeah. The stepchild. Yeah, there's some weakism. I mean, I think if you're a cool masculine looking Asian dude, like, and you're getting girls, like, dude, like, it's so hard. Like, you, people are going to say things, but ultimately they don't mean anything. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This girl said, I noticed that it's okay amongst my girlfriends to say even negative things about Asian guys and my girlfriends are all liberal. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing, man. I, we're not a protected group. We are definitely the, uh, as I've heard people say, the little bro race of all the races. We're little bro. Like, little bro will take some hits. You can make fun right. of little bro. You can poke fun at them, you know, and don't worry about it. Right, right, right. It feels like we're like the turtle in Entourage where he, yeah. everybody was like, hey, whatever I've got to say about him, I just and say And it's it. wrong. Um, somebody said it was dismissive of Bruce Lee. He was a really big deal. Here's the thing I think about Bruce Lee is like he was just one guy. And it's almost like just like Yao Ming didn't change the perception that Asian basketball players are too short because there's way more like Yuki Tagashis and you know what I mean? Like all the short guards that couldn't make it in the NBA, even though they're really talented. It's not like one shining outlier is going to like overweight everybody else. That's my general opinion. Because like you said, people are going to go after like what is available to them in their locality. Um, somebody said, why do you guys still care so much about how you're portrayed in the West? Just watch stuff from Asia. And you hear this a lot from uh, Asians, Andrew, that are always like, dude, Asian Americans are so weak. They are looking for approval in a society that hates them. Why don't they watch material that we all grew up with? Mm. Like you said. Some yeah, because you need to feel, I mean, if your goal is to be American and make it in the West, you can't only consume Asian products. To be honest, that's not going to make you necessarily stronger. I think you should consume some because you need to see some of the images and feel proud about your own culture. That is very true. But if you only consume that, then you're going to be somewhat disconnected and that doesn't make you any better to thrive in the West. Right, right, right. This guy, next one said, how come Ken Learn as an actor is so underappreciated? He's probably the best one. But then a lot of people are saying that it's because Ken Leung, Andrew, even though from a pure technical standpoint, I'll pop up a photo of Ken Leung right here. Like, he's considered one of the best Asian-American male actors, Andrew. He's, he doesn't have leading man looks. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, I would compare him to, like, Shane Larkin, Andrew. Shane Larkin is such a skilled NBA player, but he's 5'10 and he's slow. It's tough. He's just dominating EuroLeague. Shout out to Ken Leung, though. Really talented. Um... People said, why in the West do people put down Asians despite having some of the best warriors in human history? And why is there such competing stereotypes? Fierce kamikaze samurais with a hive mind versus completely asexual dweebazoid aliens. Why is that spectrum for only for Asian men? Ding, ding, ding. This comment right here, man. Yeah, I don't know. Like we, we get the extreme stereotypes man like you're either gonna take over the world or you're these little roach ants that no one needs to worry about minions yeah essentially <laughs> yeah uh people were talking about the movie dd andrew dd has captured the asian american male experience better than anything i've ever seen before agree or disagree yeah it's a pretty good movie um, people are saying, I'm just glad that I went through the tough times and now I've been elevated in a hot status. I'm enjoying it. Some people said, I still go on dates where Asian women say ridiculous things like dating an Asian guy feels incest incestuous. Obviously, here's the truth. Obviously, things are getting better, but it doesn't mean that things aren't coming out of like a deep hole or a dip. Yeah, also, guys, sometimes like, Women just think that kind of stuff is funny to say, but I, it's not cool to say. Yeah, they shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> Somebody said, oh my gosh, society needs and the rest of the country needs to catch up. Asian men are fine. And then uh, somebody brought up in the responding comment that Ali Wong used to say that same thing, but then she divorced her six foot Harvard Chad Asian husband and got with a super dorky short white guy. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I'll say this. I just don't think you anybody can be like, that's not how things should work. That's so bad. It just doesn't make any sense because nobody runs society. So it's like chastising society. It just doesn't really make any sense. Of course, there was a lot of arguing about, uh, is it society, the chicken or the egg? Because some, I presume, white guys wrote comments being like, well, we got to ask the why. And I think the why is because Asian men are short and nerdy and, protect, and perhaps lack a little testosterone. So that's the reason why. Quit blaming Hollywood. Mm. It's you guys. So that was interesting to read from New York Times readers. Um, and then, of course, last but not least, Andrew, this is the most interesting comment. Somebody said, it seems like a lot of Asian Americans 
whether it's men trying to adapt to certain standards or women just running away from the race in general are just trying to run from our families. When our families change, the situations will change. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that a lot of this does does <clears throat> stem, stem from the families and how they're raised. And again, it's not always the immigrant parents' fault, but it's just a tough situation to be in. And sometimes a tough situation creates an unideal result and then you have to start working out from that result afterwards. Right. I guess, hey, man, that harkens back to our initial comment about, man, we got a lot to untangle as Asian American women and men, to be honest, men and women, whatever. Um, ultimately, this is my big takeaway. I just thought it was so interesting, Andrew, that New York Times posted an article about this because their readership and especially the people who subscribe who can leave comments because you can only leave a comment if you're subscribed and you pay the money. It's so different than what's available on TikTok. Mm. So I just thought it was really Wait, interesting. Wait, are you saying that the comments are a little deeper and more insightful than the TikTok comments? I would say so. But it just doesn't come from somebody who knows how to do a dance. Yeah. Well, I guess everybody, uh, let us know what you think about this in the comments down below. There was a lot of great discus discussion. Um, I feel like that we've come up. Uh, there, there might be some other videos that stem from this video so i'm excited to keep this going ultimately yes it is getting better for asian men you can we can all argue about what percentage better or who's benefiting the most but we all know it's getting better so asian guys out there seize the moment that's all i gotta say oh asian women out there seize the moment too because now there's a better asian guys too so anyway guys let us know what you think in the comments section below read the article until next time we the hot pot boys we out peace, peace.